Hey everybody, it's me again. We're in section 2.1 and what we're going to do in here is we're going to build ourselves a tangent line to a curve, okay? I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. So let's say that I have this function right here, f of x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and figure out how to build a line tangent at some point, right? Which I'm just going to call x, y for lack of a better word. Now remember what a tangent line is. <clears throat> it's a line that touches the function in one spot locally. Now you got to be a little bit careful about this because I know a lot of students will think about this in a geometric uh, sense and they'll say, wait a sec, what do you mean locally? Well here's the problem, let me show you. If this function happens way out here to go up here, this line will hit the function in more than one spot. However, right here it's only hitting it in one spot, okay? Another error that students will sometimes think about a tangent line is, let's say that we've got the, uh, let's say we've got the curve y equals x cubed. Ooh, that's terrible, but that's okay. So I've got y equals badly drawn x cubed. I need like an autofill, all right? So this is y equals x cubed. Now, what does the tangent line to y equals x cubed look like? Actually, that needs to be a little bit more like that. Well, it's gonna look like this. It's going to look like this. It's going to be horizontal, believe it or not. All right? And it cuts through the function. So it doesn't have to be the typical, remember back in, in geometry when you got yourself a circle and the tangent line just kisses the circle at one tiny little point and it's not allowed to cut through it in more than one point. Well, we got ourselves a little bit different situation here. All right? Now let's talk a little bit about what that situation is. Really, the most important thing that you take away from this is this. If I zoom in on this little interval right here, and I get closer and closer and closer and closer, what you'll notice is, is that the line and the function begin to look identical. I can't tell the difference. Now, I'm sorry about this horribly drawn y equals x cubed. Let's see if I can do this a little bit better. Same thing here. If I zoom in, if I take my tangent line right there, and I zoom in closer and closer and closer and closer, I cannot tell the difference between the line and the function. In other words, the line mimics the function. That's really, really important. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, especially in the context of calculus. All right. Now, let's build one of these guys. You know what? I'm going to need lots and lots and lots of room. So let's come over this away. Let me change colors real quick. All right, so here we go. I'm going to have a function. The question is, is how do I, I hate it when I say is, is, how do I build a line tangent? Let's call this x equals a, all right? How do I build a line tangent? Well, what I do is I cheat. What you guys are going to realize is that so many of the solutions to problems in calculus are so elegant and so simple and, believe it or not, so old. This, the idea of finding the slope of this tangent line is uh, relatively new. It happened within the last few hundred years. However, the mechanisms, the mechanics, the computations have been around for thousands of years. So let me show you. Watch this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go on what's called a fishing expedition. I'm going to build, think of this as throwing out a line, like you're fishing, right? You throw the line out and I let it drop in the water. Now, I'm going to build the line that passes through those two points. All right? Now, what's this called? Do you remember? It's called the secant line. It's called a secant line. And the slope of that secant line was really easy. Remember that? The slope of the secant line, whoops, I don't know why I put an x there, the slope of the secant line was easy to figure out, right? You remember? Minimum sub sec, it's just f of b minus f of a over b minus a, right? That's easy enough, all right? Now, here's the question. What happens if I let this point float back like a bead on a wire back towards x equals a. Well, let me change my colors again. Watch what happens. All right? I end up, these are going to be a train wreck, by the way, so just bear with my crappy drawing. The pen's not working real well. All right, I'm going to end up with a line there and a line there 
and align there, and align there. And then finally, if I let this point suck so close, we refer to that as arbitrarily close to x equals a, I end up with, let's change my colors again, I end up with a tangent line. All right? True? I mean, think about that. If I take this point way out here, and I, I don't know why that did that, and I suck it back along the line so close to the original x equals a that I can't tell the difference, don't I create the tangent line? Well, seems like slope was the ball game. Remember back in Algebra 1, slope was everything. You give me a slope and I have a point. I know that this point right here, I'm changing colors all over the place, aren't I? I know that this color's, or this point's name is a comma f of a. If I want the equation of the tangent line, that's really, really simple, I, right? All I need is the slope. Well, what is the slope of the tangent line? Well, how do I do that? What happens there? Well, again, what we're going to do is simply numerically float this thing back. We're going to float x equals b back to x equals a. Get it as close as we can. Now, right now, all that we're going to do is we're going to do it numerically. We're going to use our calculator, and we're going to use the tables in our calculator, and we'll talk about how to do that mechanically in class. <clears throat> Excuse me, tomorrow or whenever we meet again. All right, but let's talk about what the slope of this tangent line represents. Well, do you remember what the slope of the secant line represented? Back from, actually from Algebra 2. Remember, this was the average rate of change. Remember that? So what would the slope of the tangent line be? If this is the average rate of change, and think about this, this line becomes so close to the curve that if you zoomed in closely enough, you wouldn't be able to differentiate. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. No pun intended on the differentiation. All right, you wouldn't be able to tell. So what would that be? If this is average rate of change, then what must this be? Well, you know what it is. It's the instantaneous rate of change. Instantaneous rate of change. Now, since this guy right here is my f of x, let's think about something. What if f of x is position of a particle? Position of a particle. What is it? Okay, so what would the slope, or excuse me, that's what it is. What would the slope of the tangent line to f of x be? What is the instantaneous rate of change of position? Well, it's velocity. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> now, your brains are probably cranking. Well, what if f of x was velocity? What's the instantaneous rate of change of that? Well, you guessed it. It's acceleration. It's very, very cool. Now, let's talk about this average rate of change. Average. Because there's a couple things. I want to give you some terminology before I sign off. Average rate of change. Okay, there are, do you remember the vocabulary word for the equation that gave us average rate of change? It's the difference quotient. The difference, difference quotient. And there are two ways to express this. Um, you can write it as f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And this is average change average change from x to a. Whoops, why would I use a capital? I have no idea. Too much caffeine. Oh, Jerry. Don't mind me. I'm just going to sit here and twitch. Or um, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, let me just hem and haw real quick, wave my hands a little bit about this guy, because this one's not as intuitive. Really, if you think about it, all that this is, is this. The only difference is, is I would name this just x, and I would name this just a. This one takes a little bit more hemming and hawing. All right, real quick, and then I'm done. And we can play with these things in class. So, you ready? We're going to call this x, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this x plus h, right? So, if I want to find the slope from of the secant line from x to x plus h, well, this is the point x comma f of x, and this is the point x plus h, comma f of x plus h, and then you just find the slope. 
right? So that implies the slope of the secant is going to be equal to f of x plus h minus f of x all over. Now the denominator is just going to be x plus h minus x, which is effectively known as f of x plus h minus f of x. Oops, there should be parentheses there. Minus f of x all over h. They're the same thing. They are identical. So guess what? We now officially have a way to at least numerically suck this point back to this point. This point back to this point. To at least get an approximation of what the slope of the tangent line might be. All right. Now I'm going to show you, we, we did this, this is review, but if you haven't seen it, I'm going to show you how to use your calculators to do it. I don't want to be redundant, I don't want to insult your intelligence, but um, for now I just wanted to give you sort of the intro and we'll talk about it tomorrow in class. Okay, have a good day.